So in today's video, we are going to focus on resolution of vectors. We are going to learn how to resolve a vector into its component vectors along the x and y axis. Now let's consider a vector C V, which makes an angle of theta degrees with a positive y axis. So this is the positive y axis. We have the positive x axis. Now the vector V makes an angle of theta degrees with a positive y axis. Now we are going to consider the angle that the vector makes with a positive y axis in the sense that we are going to focus on bearing. In previous videos, we said that bearings are always measured from the geographical north or the positive y axis in the clockwise direction to meet the vector. So this is why we are going to focus on the angle that the vector makes with the positive y axis or the geographical knot. Now from the vector, let's draw two lines that are parallel to both the x and y axis. Now the component vector that acts along the x axis is called the horizontal component of the vector which is represented by Vx and the vector that acts along the y axis is called the vertical component of the vector which is represented by Vy. Now to find Vx and then Vy, we are going to multiply the magnitude of this vector by either sine or cosine of the angle theta. So for Vx, Vx is given by the magnitude of the vector times sine of the angle theta and then Vy is also giving us the magnitude of the vector times cosine of the angle theta. Now we can represent a vector in a column vector form as V sine theta V cos theta. So given a vector in the magnitude and direction form, this is how to represent the vector in column vector form. Now the magnitude of the vector V is given by the square root of the horizontal component square plus the vertical component square. This is how to find the magnitude of a given vector. Now in the next section, we are going to express certain vectors in the magnitude and direction form as column vectors. So in this section, we have two vectors, AB and then BC, represented in the magnitude and direction form. Now we are going to express these vectors as column vectors. Now in the previous section, we said that given the vector V, then we can express this vector in the column vector form as the magnitude times sine of the angle theta and then the magnitude times cosine of the angle theta. So that is exactly what we are going to do here. So for one, we have the vector AB to be 10 kilometers. That is the magnitude. And then we have the direction or the bearing to be 30 degrees. So to represent this vector in the column vector form, we say that vector AB is equal to 10 sine 30 and then 10 cos 30. Sine 30 gives 0 0.5 and then cos 30 gives 0 0.8660 10 times 0 0.5 is 5 and then 10 times 0 0.8660 is 8.66 so this is the column vector form of the vector ab and this can also be represented as vector ab is equal to 5i plus 8.66 g now let's solve for vector bc so we have vector bc also to be 20 kilometers and then we have the direction of the bearing to be 145 degrees so vector bc is also equal to 20 sine 145 and then 20 Course 145. 
sine 145 gives 0 0.5736 and then cos 145 gives negative 0 0.8191 20 times 0 0.5736 gives 11.472 and then 20 times negative 0 0.8191 is negative 16.382 and then we can write that as vector bc equals 11.472i minus 16.382 j now let's solve a typical example on how to find the resultant vector using resolution of vectors so let's try this question find the resultant vector leaving your answer in column vector form if v1 is 600 kilometers on a bearing of 60 degrees and then v2 is 400 kilometers on a bearing of 315 degrees now to find the resultant vector, we are going to resolve the two vectors v1 and v2 as column vectors and after that we are going to add their x and y components. Now let's solve this question together. So we are going to resolve v1 and v2 as column vectors. Let's start off with v1. So v1 in column vector form becomes the magnitude which is 600 times sine of the angle which is 60 degrees and then magnitude 600 cosine of the angle 60 degrees so this becomes 600 times sine 60 is 0 0.8660 and then cos 60 is 0 0.5 so that is 600 times 0 0.5 600 times 0 0.8660 gives 519.6 and then 600 times 0 0.5 gives 300. So this is the column vector representation of V1. Now let's do same for V2. V2 is also equal to 400 sine 315 degrees and then 400 cos 315 degrees so we have 400 sine 315 gives negative 0 0.7071 and then cos 315 is 0 0.7071 so 400 times negative 0 0.7071 gives negative 282.84 and then also 400 times 0 0.7071 gives 282.84 so this is also the column vector representation of v2 so to find the resultant vector we are going to add both the x and y components of the two vectors. The resultant vector r is given by v1 plus v2. So for v1 we had 519.6 and then 300 plus v2 we had negative 282.84 and then 282.84 now we can represent this as a single vector we have 519.6 minus 282.84 and then 300 plus 282.84 so this becomes 519.6 minus 282.84 gives 236.76 and then 300 plus 282.84 
we have 582.84 therefore we say that the resultant vector r is equal to 236.76 i plus 582.84 j so this is the resultant vector so that's it for today's video Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye.